This is LCTV 66. I'm Brandon Webb here today at Thaddeus Stevens College of Technology. Here at the What's So Cool About Manufacturing event hosted by Manson. I am extremely excited. This is the first time I've ever participated in this event. Um, so the students and I learned as we went. So it is exciting to be here because we have finished our video and they feel so proud of themselves and this is a night for them. So it must be so cool to have that door open up. Yes, and we are definitely doing it again next year. I'm to glad to be hear right that. back here next year. Yeah. Um, we are here for an event called What's So Cool About Manufacturing? And it is in our seventh year, I believe, tenth total year. It's a Pennsylvania-wide program. Um, we are one of seven MEP centers across the state that do this. And uh, what it primarily is, is middle school, middle, middle uh, eight, uh, school kids, seventh to eighth grade, do this competition for video. And what they do is they do the creative behind it, they do the, the videotaping at the manufacturer, um, and they put all this information together, as well as interviews. And we present it today to have them be uh, voted on. And, um, and from that, they win awards and go to states, which is held in uh, Harrisburg. Manufacturing can bring in other ideas and goals and job opportunities. It's a people-focused business. Lots of people coming together, working as a team, working with some really cool equipment in order to make a product that our customers want and need. The coolest part is everything from the core gear to maintenance, um, shipping, making boxes for some of the you know, bigger name customers. My job here is safety, environmental, and health a strong culture, a safety culture here that allows the frontline leadership to teach, coach, and train. We really focus on taking care of the folks that work for us because we believe they're the ones that make the difference. So the great thing about the paper and the corrugated packaging industry is that it's a completely renewable, recyclable industry. So we recycle batteries, we recycle oil, we recycle paper. The water that goes back into the system as far as going to the water treatment plant because that water comes back out into our streams. and Highest recycled material of any packaging material. All of that material gets brought back into the paper mills and ground back up uh, and mixed with new trees in order to continue making paper. Because each box can only be recycled about five to seven times. The fibers every time you recycle them get a little bit shorter and eventually they're a little bit too short to use. So we have to continually use new trees as well. Hi, I'm Dane Zimmerman, Director of uh, Business Development here at LaserFab. What is so cool about manufacturing? Well, I think manufacturing is cool because it involves men and women of all ages and experiences uh, to get a chance to work in an exciting and growing industry that supports all of our friends, families, and neighbors' industries and businesses that they're involved in. My name is Leon Zimmerman. What's, what's so cool about manufacturing? What's cool about manufacturing is it's a different job every day. We do all kinds of different parts. For me, it's interesting to get a print and figure out what I need to do first as far as bending, and what tooling you need, and, uh, and then making a finished product. So the products you see here are finished from our, our end. They will go into bigger components at our customers or further downstream in the manufacturing process. Well, what you see here is um, components that go into industrial baking ovens, into industrial racks, in warehouses such as Amazon or you know big warehouses like that. Uh, you also see components that go into medical devices or big um, cylinders or um, pressure vessels for chemicals or for other processes in, in industrial applications. So how is what we do at our school different from what you guys do here? So you're using the same technology that we're using. It's a CNC program. So you're creating a design, drawing it up, and then having it etched into wood. Here we're doing the same thing, just with metal. 
uh, our customer supplies with a file. If they don't, we have to draw it just like you would in the AutoCAD program. So you're getting experience with the exact same technology that we're using. We're just using it at a much larger scale, cutting you know thick metal and cutting uh, you know parts in, in huge volumes. But the best part about what we do here and what you do there is that you can come from where you are and come to work at LaserFab and learn on the job. until I was probably in my early 20s. Um, I had an engineering technician role and I was a military veteran so I had the GI Bill and I figured the next logical step in my career progression to get, was to get an engineering job. My favorite part about Allegheny York would be uh, when I go in the field and I do sales out on the road I get to see what the seals go inside of so that's pretty cool to me. Um. Somewhat, so any material that is left that wasn't cut in the part that we're trying to make, we can save that, and if we're making any parts out of the same material that are small enough to fit on what's left, then we'll use it. Um, so anything that's a reasonable size, we will try to keep, set it aside, and then use it in the future, if anything will fit on that. I like when a uh, custom part comes out, so something that really isn't made before or something that a manufacturer doesn't stock on the shelf. Uh, I usually just get a drawing or dimensions from the customer and then it's on me to program, make the machine, do what the machine does, whether it's locate bolt, bolt holes or do a crazy height with a dimension. Um, that's my favorite. It's just making something out of nothing. I to do the design work. Plus, I get to make the parts. So I'm not just sitting in an office doing design work, and I'm not just out here making parts. I get to do both parts of it, and then I get to see it go to production and produce molded parts and come to a finished product. Whole bunch of hay to chop. Well, could you get a new piece? Well, I'm gonna call the dealer. Hello? Yeah, I need a part for the head of my chopper. You don't have it? Ugh. All right. Well, I don't know. I'll have to figure something else out. Well, if they don't have it, I know a place we can get it. Really? Yeah. It's called Asher Machine Works. Okay, where are they at? Right here in Ephrata. Oh, well, we'll have to give them a call and go check them out. In this particular instance, uh, we were doing some reverse engineering on it, so we had to take it through our design department where they were able to inspect it, reverse engineer it, and make a model up for it. And once that raw material came in, it could go through our machine shop and weld shop, and then through our quality department to ensure that the part is what the customer wanted. At that point, it gets shipped out to the customer, um, trying to adhere to their highest standards and highest quality. Uh, a machinist is somebody that works in manufacturing that can take raw material and use a machine tool to remove that material to make a precision part. Chemical technician, pretty much, you receive all the parts from the machinists. Uh, you get a packet of prints, so you have to have a little bit of machining knowledge, welding. Uh, inspection, things like that, so that you can take those parts, those prints, and you can put them together how the engineer designed it to. Um, so here at Astro Machine, uh, I do some welding. Uh, that's my main responsibility. We do a bunch of different uh, processes here. Thank you, that's great. 
And it looks just right. Look at that. Perfect fit. Perfect. It works. Thanks to Asher Machine Works. Being that I am fresh to this, I don't know exactly how it got started, but I do know where it started, and it was up in the Lehigh Valley, um, one of our sister MRCs. It was amazing. With, um, starting even just before we went on the field trip, coming up with the interview questions, what they were going to see, um, talking with the company, and then when we actually went, figuring out what they wanted to film while we were there, and take pictures of while we were there, and then coming back and taking 200 clips that they have taken and shrunk it down to 2 minutes and 30 seconds. So, so what I'm hearing you said, there's a lot of work. A lot place. of work. The students came, they were with me almost every day. Today, we are at New Concept Technology, trying to figure out what's so cool about manufacturing. This is our design wheel. We see this everywhere in our daily life, including in manufacturing. The benefits of automated products versus humans working on the assembly line. Other drawbacks to automa automation. So, so the benefits to it are, um, like I said, they don't call in sick, yeah. you know, but the draw, there are drawbacks to automation. So you have to have a support team behind, uh, that to help keep them running. Uh, you have to have programmers, you have to have a controller, you know, to help a controls guy to help keep the automation cells running. Yeah. So there are costs involved in keeping the robots uh, running consistently all the time. What steps must you work through when working through the process of like molding? Well, when we're building a, a, a molding process, and that's kind of what my job is, I build the, the process of, that the plastic goes through in order to create these parts. Uh, and that requires us to cover a few basics. Uh, first, we have to gather info, information on the parts that we're, we're going to be making down the road, uh, the materials that are required for the job, uh, dimensional aspects, part use considerations, and then also a list of potential challenges or problems that may come up down the road. In our design process, we evaluate a product's success and then sometimes go, must go back to make necessary adjustments. Do you do the same thing? Oh yes, all the time. So whenever we are finding something that doesn't work as we plan, we go back and it happens very often on uh, our design process itself where quality will validate uh, every phase of the design and we'll tell the engineering team that this is not working as per our plan. My name is Matt Dorn, I'm the President and CEO of the Anstack Company. Our company traces its roots back to 1878 here in York, Pennsylvania. We've been in business a long time, about 145 years coming up here in 2023. I'm Jennifer Doran, I am the Vice President of Administrative Services. So Anstat is a printing company that specializes in anything print. We put ink on paper in many different ways. When a job comes in the door, it usually goes straight to either a salesperson or to customer service, depending on what type of job it is. It goes to estimating, and then from that point, it goes to our pre-media department, so it might be design. What's so cool about your job? Oh my goodness, well, uh, I get to use my creativity. Very fast paced and busy job, so the days go very fast, sometimes too fast. The main thing is I get to use my creativity just to create all kinds of stuff. And then from there it goes to the press room, it's printed, then it goes to our bindery, and it's bound in some way, shape, or form, or just trimmed and ready to go directly to the customer. Then it leaves and goes to our shipping department. Oh, what's so cool about manufacturing? That's such an easy question for me. It's different every single day. 
being able to go into a store or into any place or even get a piece of mail that uh, I printed is pretty cool. I think one of the coolest things is that every day we get to make something, something you can tangibly see and do. We all get along good. We all have a blast together. We all have the same like minds, so it's pretty cool. My name's Todd Falk. I'm the marketing director here at KRB Machinery. My name is Scott Harmon, and my role at KRB is product subject matter expert. Shannon Lau. I weld and fabricate uh, shear line modules all day. KRB Machinery is an original equipment manufacturer, and we make um, equipment that cuts and bends rebar. I really like my job at KRB and especially the position I'm in. I could be doing anything from print production to editing the website to doing a video. KRB Machinery, we build uh, automated equipment. We have equipment all over the world. A basic day here at KRB for me is basically anything dealing with engineering, uh, service, uh, also uh, manufacturing, uh, maybe even helping design. Sometimes I even have to program and sometimes I even have to do some electrical drawings. I grab parts all day. Um, I weld them together. I fabricate. I think manufacturing is cool because it's a very hands-on job rather than sitting at a desk and it's very important to industry and construction because they use it a lot. What's so cool about KRB is um, uh, being an original equipment manufacturer, um, I get to see raw steel turned into uh, machinery that moves and actually creates other things. So I, I think that's one of the neatest things. The camaraderie we have here with the core group that's been around for a long time, um, it's more like family than actually employees. And basically just seeing new products we're bringing out, keeping up with our competitors. Manufacturing. Woo! Yay! Woo! Yeah! Manufacturing Resource Centers started about 10 years ago. They just hit their 10th anniversary and they had theirs last week. So that's where it started at. Um, but I'm not sure exactly why or how it started, other than to get people, the kids connected to manufacturers. Hi, so I'm Amy. I'm a recruiter for Daddy Stevens College of Technology. And what I have here is some stuff from our computer integrated machining program and also our um, metals fabrication and welding program. So some really cool items. All this stuff was actually made by our students. If you want to take a look at these items. Some really neat welding items. Some things. This became our pen holder. One of our students actually made this. Um, he was working with the Philly shipyard and he made this and won actually a major competition. Came in first place with this. And our students go over this. This is phenomenal. Uh, this I've been in STEM uh, in computers for seven years. This first year I'm hearing about it and everything's just been over the top. I, I can't wait for my students to get here to be able to experience this. Phenomenal. I like that word. Um, I really do think that it's a phenomenal place to have this sort of space here where students in STEM interested in this kind of thing can get involved and at such a young age, right when it's probably the most impactful from that transition from middle school to high school. Well, they'll probably grow up and get involved in a lot more technical stuff, much more advanced level of learning. So I think it's great that we're here today. But I want to ask you, how do you think this event is going to impact you? My main goal as a STEM teacher is to lay a foundation. I want to offer the kids a variety of things and be able to show them all that's out there. And so again, laying that foundation and you know, like you said, sparking that interest in the future.
this machine is what we call a CMYK. So it has black, yellow, magenta, and cyan. And depending on what color we need, basically the machine mixes the colors together so that it can get most of the colors. At times we use just vinyl, that is already has color. I don't know, it looks like a face is going to come out, doesn't it? Yeah. I thought it was a palm tree at first. You can't really see it because it's magic, but you get there's like letters in there that will, the waste parts will pull out and it'll just keep whatever wording's in there. To save time. Now, from what I hear in the algebra room, uh, they should know or learn conversion. Uh, going from fractions to decimals, or as metrics and inches. Is that needed? No. So, this is conversion in general, so we don't do a lot of metrics. I mean, I have the opportunity to build whatever anybody's imagination is within precise parameters to... I've worked on stuff that is flirting in outer space right now. I've worked on stuff that's on race car tracks. I've worked on stuff that's on Navy ships helping defend our country. Cool. So I get to actually make things. Um, it's a very hands-on approach to uh, making sure we can produce parts. Uh, we design uh, tooling, stamping dies, a lot of metal parts and I get to actually design something that you can have in your hands and see, oh I made this and I helped make something else. Um, yeah, I think that's really cool. That's something I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, what is cool about your business? Uh, what, what's cool about here, uh, just like a lot of manufacturing, you get to work with your hands. You're not mm -hmm. stuck in an office all day. You get to go out on the shop floor. You get to build stuff. We actually get to build cool stuff like motorcycle parts, um, not just uh, for Harley, but uh, new customers, electric motorcycles, uh, a wheelchair that actually raises you up to eye level, can go up and down. You can play basketball in it. Um, it only goes to veterans. So you get all kinds of exciting stuff, but the, bi the biggest part for me is working with people, um, the team. Uh, our, one of our core values is, no, is teamwork. No one of us is smarter than the rest of us. My experience, anytime you have a team working together, looking at data, like you can see around the room, come up with something way better than what any individual could have. Hi there, welcome to the Bureau Place at Axe Cafe. What would you like? I'd like a mocha and a Sebencio whipped cream cheese with bagel, please. I'm so sorry, sir. We just got out of the Sebencio whipped cream cheese. No. Another customer got here right before you and ordered our last one. Not the cream cheese. I know, sir. It's horrible. My name is Cyril Ferroul. Alors, I started to, to work for Savencia around 22 years ago. It's important to have teamwork in human resources because you're, you're the one dealing with all the employees in the plant. You're helping them with questions about benefits, about payroll, things like that. So you have to be flexible, be able to work with people, different personalities. Do I think teamwork is especially important in my work? Yes, a quality department works with multiple departments. We work with the production team, the maintenance team, and HRD team. Uh, 
with programs like training. When do I feel that teamwork is important as well? It always is important. Um, another key thing is communication. That's a big, big thing. In education, did I need to be on uh, high school for the role as a quality manager? Uh, I have a college degree, a bachelor's in science. Uh, typically for human resources, they're looking for a, a bachelor's degree. You know, it could be in business administration, it could be in human resources or, or other fields as well. The most interesting part with the group is that you have the possibility to change uh, location, of course, but the task and the job that you have. So you can start with supply chain, like I did, go to R&D, move to packaging, move to productions, and up to the plant manager. Company growing, uh, and, and maybe a couple more facilities in the U.S. Uh, right now, we only have three facilities in the U.S. Uh, so what do I think the future is? This, uh company. This is a global company and they are going to continue to expand uh, different facilities and uh, food product types. Sebencia, that's what's so cool about manufacturing. We are P Valley. The Pequay Valley Intermediate School. Video. Audio. Lighting. Experts. AFP with locations in California, Wisconsin, and right here in New Holland, PA. This is the world headquarters of Advanced Food Products. The manufacturers of aseptically packaged cheese sauces, puddings, cheese flavorings, and dips. When you were in school, did your teachers think manufacturing was cool? During high school, anytime that I would hear someone talking about manufacturing in my head, right away I would picture like a line of people just working hours and hours and hours. I was getting the story of you're going to be working night shift, you're going to be working 12 hours at a time, no breaks, and it's going to be a lot of manual labor. So, you know, do well in my class. I originally grew up in New York City. When I went to school over there, they really heavy on going to college, getting a degree. Times have changed and manufacturing is cool. And you can work your way up to a job that's even more cool. What I enjoyed about manufacturing was is that you could actually start in a location, even if it was just putting cardboard into a machine, and then could actually learn and see the different jobs that are going around for you and find different directions and different career paths for you to go through. One of the cool things about manufacturing is that you get to taste the products. So we do the solids, we make sure that the colors look good, temperature is good, the pH is good. It's, it keeps me on my toes. I learn something new and I feel like in this company I get a big chance of like going up in a ladder. My position is pretty cool because I get to know all the names of all the employees and I get to know people's skills um, and I get to see them develop those skills. It's very fun to figure out problems and troubleshoot things that you would never even think could break or happen to a piece of equipment or machinery. I'm a system supervisor, so by learning everything that I have from packaging, processing, everywhere else, it was able for me to move up the line and do what I do now. I feel like my position is the coolest position. <laughs> you have all the ingredients, you can't do anything with them separately, you have to mix them all together a certain way, and that's pretty much what I do. And even without the college degree, you can end up in positions and actually have control of what you want to do and, and how you want the plant to be. Well, uh, so some of the stuff that we'll be seeing here is going to be pretty, uh, pretty cool. In fact, that they're all middle schoolers, seventh and eighth graders. It's got to be pretty impactful for you to be latching onto the youth like that. It is, it is. And, um, you know, we have partners that help us out with that. Stadio Stevens is one of them. They're offering this to, to us today for free, and um, which allows us to present this information to, to the kids. Finding 3D printing and getting into robotics, and now I'm up in middle school, too, and I makerspace club and the STEM club and on the video contest and so I'm reaching them starting at kindergarten and I don't stop. I keep on them. Yes. It's so cool. The format is so early on too. It really allows you to latch on to that. Yes. It's such a young age with ideas that are coming. Yes. It's so cool. And the students come up with things that I would never ever have thought of. Things that when they're given the opportunity to be creative and innovative they up with things that amazing. What's so cool is that as technology becomes so much more advanced, so much more evolved over time, so do the students. Oh, right? yes. I feel like each generation still gets that much smarter, that much more creative, that much more animated. Yes. Thank you so much for talking. You're welcome. It's so great to have you. I'm Brandon Webb, and this is the Nelson TV 66. Thank you for watching.